So we're finally getting down to the finishing touches here. Putting the final coat of paint on the top sides after a thorough wet sand with 320 grit sandpaper. And then we move on to painting the green anti-foul boot top. That always makes it look nice. Lady writer on the TV Talking about the virgin man It reminded me of you And we got our fiddles there varnished, so putting the galley back together. Put all the pieces of wood back in and then finally put the bungs in to cover up the screws, which uh, always makes it look nice. Okay, so we're just about done here. Just got to put some varnish on those bungs, which I'm not going to build up. Usually I just slap a couple of coats, sand it a bit, and put a couple of coats of varnish on it. So it'll blend in. Okay, so now we're on to the final step, which, which is to actually install the seacock through hull and new hose going to the galley sink. So the first thing we have to do uh, after trimming some threads off of the mushroom uh, fitting, a little too long, is to orient the, the, the mushroom so that when we screw the seacock down it stops in the correct orientation. So as you can see the barb is pointing uh, to where the hose is coming from. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to mark the mushroom with a pen there. Uh, so I know the correct orientation so that when I, when I, when I screw the seacock back down on it, uh, the barb will be in the right place to take the hose. So I bought some of the recommended Trident uh, black rubber hose here, uh, which is still reinforced with wire. And uh, I'm using a razor knife to cut it down to size, but I'm going to have to use a hacksaw to cut the wire. But nonetheless, this hose is a lot more flexible and easier to work with than the white uh, sanitation hose I used earlier uh, previously. Uh, I found that stuff was just so stiff, it was just almost impossible to get it onto the barbs or to bend it. So, so far I'm liking this hose much better. So with everything all set to go, we are now at the final step, which is to take it apart and put all the sealant on the through hull. And I'm using 3M4200, which is 5200 but one half the adhesive strength. So not as sticky as 5200, but still a sealant that is suitable for below the waterline uses. And just got to make sure you get all surfaces completely covered with that sealant. Uh, otherwise it'll leak. If you've ever done caulking and sealing, you know it's, it's a little bit of a tricky business there. And I also want to put some sealant on the, on the threads on the inside of the mushroom. Because another place that water could get through is water coming in through the, the uh, through hull and then leaking down through the threads. So I wanted to make sure to get some sealant on those threads. And with that done, then we just screw the seacock down onto the backing plate. And it should stop in the right place. That's good. It's getting a little tougher to turn. Nice and tight. And that looks a little too far. Bring it back a bit. All right. Let's try. Now try wrestling the hose on. All right. Well, the through hole has been replaced. New hose. 
But of course, we're not going to find out whether or not we did it right until we put the boat back in the water. Since replacing the bobstay with Dynex ducks, I've gone through several different methods of tensioning the lashings, uh, which tension the bobstay. And the method I finally settled on is using a gantlin, which is the little uh, uh, two-part block and tackle with the cam cleats there. So what I do is I tension that, which is pulling at the end of the lashing. And then what I have is a couple of bulldog clamps at the lashing, which goes between the lashing and a couple of the wraps between the shackle and the eye there. So once I get those bulldog clamps tight, as they are now, and just make sure everything remained tight, then I'll take the lashing and actually tie a knot to secure it. Then finally I'll lash the end of the lashings with tarred yacht marlin uh, just to keep the knot tight. So it's belt and suspenders and then some. Uh, but I find this method has finally worked for me. So now that the boat should theoretically float, uh, we're on to painting the bottom. And I've switched bottom paints yet again. Uh, this time I'm going to try the, the Seahawk Biocomp, which is still an ablative, but they claim it's a little harder than some of the other ablatives, so it wears away more slowly. Um, last time with the Blue Water Copper Shield, I put on three coats because I thought it was wearing away too quickly. Um, but still, I, I had quite a few barnacles after one year, less than one year. So I decided to try a different paint yet again. And recall before that I used uh, Pettit's Ultima 60. And again, I had problems with barnacles growing in, in less than a year in the water. So it is launch day. Now it's always a nerve-wracking moment when you see that, uh, when they pick that boat up off the stands there. So I've asked them to let her hang in the slings for a few minutes while I get some remaining anti-foul uh, where the blocks were. Whereas it was, of course, impossible to paint with her sitting on those blocks. So just a quick sand and then slap some paint on. This paint is supposed to have 24 hours before launching, but uh, there's, there's just no way to do that. So, But I find that uh, even with touch-up, a lot of times it'll still last just fine. All right. So I'm going to jump aboard in a minute here and find out whether that through hull repair was done correctly. First, let's check the new through hull and see what we got. She's still hanging in the slings, but she's almost floating at this point. And shining a nervous light on there. And dry as a bone so far. Good. And check the two seacocks aft under the cockpit drains. It's a little hard to see. And there is some water dripping into the bilge. But I, I, I am able, can't see it with the camera, but I am able to determine that it's not coming from the through hulls. Um, actually, it'll turn out later that it's coming from the fresh water system. Uh, there's a leak. That's a subject for another video. All right, sculling ore deployed and engaged. Lower away on that travel lift. 
And let's get this old girl moved out into open water and freedom again. get a good idea of how effective the skull is there. You see it takes a little while to get her going. But uh, once she moves, we're moving at about a knot, knot to a knot and a half, and that's not too much effort. And we're in almost flat calm conditions. There's actually a slight wind right off the starboard bow there. You know, less than about three knots, I would say. You see just little ruffles, maybe three or four knots of wind. So I'm still waiting on some packages, so I'm just going to go out into Fishing Bay and drop my anchor here. Looks like a pretty good place right here. I still got the electrical cords dangling over the side. And we'll take care of that soon enough. <laughs> 